Hey everyone, welcome back to day four of the Neo-Pagan November Challenge started by the Sunshine State Witch. Today I'm not feeling that great, so if I'm not super energetic and stuff and, I have, and I'm having to look down at my notes, that's why, because I have a major migraine. But I still really want to participate in the challenge, so I'm going to go ahead and make this video. So today's prompt is, I once thought. And at first I wasn't entirely sure what to make a video on that would be interesting to watch, but then I kind of came up with a few ideas and I decided I want to talk about familiars. So, I once thought that familiars were physical animals, like pets, but uh, then after actually like researching and learning more, I've discovered that that is a common misconception. I think if you actually look at the meaning of the word and the history behind it, you'll see the facts. A familiar is, above anything else, a servant. It is something that serves you in your magical practice. Many animals, like our pets, are attuned to different energies, and they are, will be naturally drawn to your magical practice because of this, but they do not serve you. Um, basically, you know, if you have to feed them, take care of them, look after them, clean up after them, they aren't servants or familiars. Sorry, technical difficulties. So I was, I was in the middle of saying, but a familiar historically has always been a spirit or entity that the witch has either conjured or summoned or created, which yes, I believe they can be created. So there is some kind of contract or pack involved. And this is an energetic entity, entity sorry, that acts on behalf of the witch. So a familiar can cast spells with you or even for you in your place as well as doing energy and spiritual combat to protect you and those you love. They take the injuries from failed spells and they take the negativity and curses upon themselves in place of the witch if the witch is being attacked. They can be hurt or even killed and destroyed doing this and it certainly isn't a job you'd want for your sweet pet. Familiars are not something the witch gets attached to like you do with a pet. They're tools and servants to be used for the workings of the witch. So, I think that the common idea that pets or other physical animals are familiars came from basically like misunderstandings over the years. So, back in the burning times, like during the witch trials, the accusers who would accuse people of being witches twisted the meaning of familiars to fit their own needs. They basically took it from being a spirit to being a demon to being a demon inhabiting the body of an animal. And so they would accuse people who were good with or just liked animals as being a witch by saying the animals were their familiars. And really though, they just kind of like made that stuff up and a lot of other stuff up as well, just so they could like get rid of people they didn't like or, and get like their land or their property or whatever. So from there, there was this idea that familiars were demons possessing animals, right? which then over time seems to have kind of translated into them just being animals in general. And, you know, of course, Hollywood hasn't helped with this stereotype and misinformation. They've really spread the idea of the animal familiars. Even uh, I watched the new, newer Sabrina TV show not all that long ago, and in there she has her demon familiar cat, Salem. So it's just something that they just keep perpetuating. So personally, I believe that calling and insisting your pet is your familiar can sort of make them act in the place of an actual familiar. Not that they'll start to like do spells for you and actually help you in your witchcraft in that way, but that if someone does send you negativity or a curse, it can end up aiming itself at the pet. And instead of being blocked by an actual familiar, it can hit your pet and cause them to be very sick or um, even possibly die because they're acting in the place of what a real familiar would actually do. So obviously, that's not something you would want for your pet. Um, you know, I would seriously hate to see that happen to my beloved pets, who I consider to really be part of my family. I think pets are great to have, but they aren't familiars. I believe that anyone saying they are 
hasn't really done their research and fails to understand what the word familiar actually means and entails. I think it's perfectly fine to have a strong bond and connection with an animal, but they are companions, not familiars. So basically, I used to think familiars were an animal you had a strong bond with. And I even remember in an older video from some years ago, I called my cat Callie, who unfortunately passed away last year, my familiar. I was actually filming in this room. I was just on the couch that's over there. And I distinctly remember saying that. I've had cats and dogs and other pets my whole life, but when I first adopted Callie when I was around 16, we just had this like immediate connection and this like really strong soul bond that I had never felt with any other animal. And so because I didn't really know any better, I thought she must be my familiar because that's what I had seen other people talking about online, that their pets were their familiars. And, um, you know, she was a fantastic companion, best cat ever, but she was not a familiar. I look back now and honestly, I find it a little embarrassing, but um, it's part of my journey, and so I'm not gonna try to hide or deny it. You know, now that I'm older and wiser, I know better, and I know and realize that I need to properly educate myself on things and not just believe everything that someone says online just because they sound like they know what they're talking about. One thing I really love about witchcraft and paganism is that it is so free and it isn't like there's one solid strict set of rules you have to follow like there is in Christianity with the Bible. It's a lot more kind of go with the flow and kind of putting bits and pieces of different paths together to create your own, which I really like. However, that's that's a good thing. I like that, but it can be bad because it mean it can mean it's harder to find accurate information. There's not there's not as many teachers, more people are doing this solitary and self-learning, which makes it more difficult sometimes. So um, you have to really learn to think critically and dig deeper. And now that I've grown and matured some, I've learned that more and more. Anyway, I look forward to seeing what everyone else does for this topic today. And I hope you enjoyed what I had to say. I'd love to hear any comments you have down below. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you tomorrow for the next video in this challenge. Bye!